Okay, so uh, today we're going to have a crack at making a um, uh, infill block plane. I've got some material here. I've been wanting to make one for a while, not for any sort of woodworking reason. I just think they look pretty cool and I've got some spare material. Well, I had to buy some as well. But So the stuff I have got then is like some 10 mil... Uh, Grade unknown steel, uh, some O1 tool steel, which I've already hardened at this point um, I'm, because I'm making the video a bit back to front. Uh, some silver steel rod, and then some, I think it's five or six mil uh, brass plate, which now, in retrospect, is a bit overkill, but <clears throat> live and learn. It's quite flat actually. I assume it's extruded bar or you know, rolled flat or whatever. There is a little bit of bow in it, but it's not horrendous. So, yeah, um, first job will to be uh, mark everything out, well, clean the scale and rust and all the rest of it off, strike some lines to make sure that, you know, where I actually file is uh, what I want taken away. <clears throat> From there, will then uh, sort of fit the brass cheeks of the plane, then deal with the blade. Um, yeah, so I'll bring you back in at various stages and show you the updates. So uh, I probably am going to go a little OTT on the mark out, but um, fluid, the marking out fluid, sorry, only because I can capture everything then. Uh, you know, you see these old sweat machinists and stuff. They've been doing it for, for years and they just mark out little bits and they know what they're doing. Well, knowing what I'm doing is something I've never been accused of. So belt and braces on this little bad boy blew it all up it takes no time you know and i think everyone kind of likes this dark blue on the brass it's a good oh something's just gone wrong there so like i say yeah this will be the cheeks of the plane and then we'll get to it so my aim is to sort of show you as well that you don't need any sort of real heavy... I, I mean, if you had a milling machine, yeah, you, it's going to take you half as long and be probably a bit more cost effective. But <clears throat> if you don't have that, if you're in a similar situation to me, you're like a dad, and you just want to get out of the house and do something a bit more constructive than drink beer, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I enjoy beer. But if you like doing stuff with your hands, hopefully this will show you that uh, you don't have to have heavy machinery to get it done that is an aim of the, sh the shed though once we're down here to um to eventually get a mill a lathe and uh, surface grinder really because I, I don't know i just like the finish of surface ground stuff it looks good right we'll let that gas off for a bit it's got quite a nice smell sort of like uh if you ever put like model airplanes together the uh the glue you used to get for that um like a poly resin sort of smell so yeah probably should have a respirator on or something but you know i'm in my own shed okay date then we've got the uh brass uh in the vice so i've just struck two lines uh this is the halfway point between each side <clears throat> so it's a 500 mil by um i think it's five or six mil thick so like getting on for quarter inch for the uh, like in old money Let's just have a little guesstimation of the old calipers. Well, this says it's six and a half, but I thought I ordered five. Irrelevant. Um, so, yeah, quarter inch. So, 
just going to cut through there and then super glue these two halves together and then uh, I can start um, yeah, getting on with it basically. So, um, what am I thinking? It will be a case of um, cut down here, super glue them together and then I might do some sort of you know, decorative shape to it. I might just keep it flat. Um, we'll see how it goes. And here we go with the cutting. Oh. Right, I'll bring you back in a minute. It's going to take all day. Oh, like a knife through hot butter. Yeah. Oh, we're only massively off. What's the matter? She's hooped. Cool, rather than letting it drop on the floor, just fatigue it off. Obviously, a blade tooth or something, it's right hooped because, uh, whoops, she ain't nowhere near straight. Not to worry though, because, uh, like I say, they're just going to get old uh, chain ganged up and then we'll get to it. Hiya! So, um, currently, the wife and kids are away in Tenerife, so I've got a uh, a little clay pot that I'm making, drawing in the grill. And the reason for that is it's then going to be made, uh, used to make some... Uh, uh, case hardening compound that I'm going to have a go at making my, my own. So I've got some off cuts of leather, some chalk, and um, yeah, so I'm going to bake them off and then crush them up a bit, <clears throat> try and get it super fine, and then that, that'll be case hardening compound. I think Click Spring made one, um, so I'm going to have a go at that. Um, and then we'll, yeah, I'll video the results of the case hardening compound to see if it works. Obviously I'd imagine it's just gonna be adject failure, but we'll see. Oh, when it gets a little bit like that, sometimes it's uh, a bit easier to use. Oh. Just chiseler, I mean, uh, cold chisel and get off and a hammer and just sort of fatigue it out of there a little bit, especially when you start feeling a bit knackered because your arms are done in. Just be uh, be careful you don't go in too hard because you'll deform bits of the, the metal that you don't necessarily want to trash and then you know. It is, uh, you're gonna have to like cut that out somehow, either with sandpaper or grinding wheel, or, you know, something or other, but it'll have to be gone. Poing. So, yeah, we'll, uh, where's my little scribe? I'm coming from this direction now. Um, it just makes filing easier. So, you've got this, like, you end up with like a pyramid shape in here, and then to start off with, you're only it sort of plays to your advantage because you're only cutting a little bit of material to start with. So you get through it relatively quick. And then as you work down towards your line, it naturally slows down because you're cutting more material, um, which I found is quite helpful so that you don't <clears throat> overshoot it and you can start working your way down your file grade. So, you know, you've got fairly aggressive cut to start with and then end up using like uh, needle file type things. To finish it off, uh, get right up in the corners, you know. 
but it doesn't need to be super duper in there because there'll be brass plate but the the neater the job the sort of easier it will be to to end up with a decent product obviously if you've got a, you've got better ideas on how to make it then uh, i'm all ears let us know down in the comments because uh you know i'd imagine there'll be a few blakes out there a few people out there sorry that will uh yeah, pretty big. Might want to give it a go. Just fill, fill their time up. And now we're on to the filing, which is, you know, super tedious. But yeah, I've chalked my files up now as well. So I'll show you. I'll get come back to you in a minute with this one. And then I'll do the other two off camera. And then I'll grind the other two out, I think, just to speed things up. Okay, Doug, I'll put you in a bit closer um, to show you what we're up to now. So we've cut most of this bit out in here. Um, so I'll just show you that, actually. It's not coming up particularly well on camera. So uh, freehanding this. We're going to file this in now. Um Yeah, I'm going to follow it this way. So up to the back of this, because I know it's not coming in very well on the camera. And then that way. So we've probably got about one and a half mil, one mil to come off the width. And then, oh, anything up to say three mil off the, the height. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> it's just plenty of hand foiling, which is super fun. Yeah, I'll try and get the uh, width in first because then you can just touch it up, uh, you know, with the, the files <clears throat> once it's done. So bring the width out. And then go down and then if uh, a lot of you probably already know this anyway if you got like a safe edge this one didn't so i ground it in on the uh, uh bench grinder when i got the files i think my brother gave them christmas so yeah whereas this one this one is a slightly better quality file you can see it comes with a factory safe edge so once we're done width wise i ride that safe edge not overly hard because it's still harder it'll put a sort of end up gouging it out over time but um just rest it up against that the width edge once that's cut in and then go down or vice versa if you find that you need to come in take a bit out of the width you can use the safe edge across the bottom i'm using it with the serrated edge down and that that just helps cut you know, we're cutting two two faces at once then. Anyway, right, I'll bring you back in a bit. <clears throat> 